So this topic has been brought up many times and a lot of you guys have asked me on my streams what are my thoughts on the current state of Mortal Kombat. I have a lot of thoughts. I wrote down a list here so if you see me looking over here it's because I don't want to miss any uh, points that uh, I want to discuss in this video because there are a lot. Now before we go further into the video I gotta give a massive shout outs to the amazing sponsor of today's video that's Ridge Wallet. Now Ridge is one of my favorite not only sponsors of the channel but my favorite products to use i use a ridge item daily this is my daily driver my wallet my ridge leather wallet right here you guys have seen me show this off many times i always say i'm gonna switch to the new wallet but I love my original Ridge wallet. Like look at all these new colorways they have. They got the cobalt blue leather, flower power, what's up? Natural leather, hold up. Forged carbon, there's too many, there's too many, okay? But for me to switch, I usually need something to be broken. And I've had this wallet. I've been using the same Ridge wallet for I feel like several years now and it is still in great shape you know why because ridge is built to last my friends my family every time they see me use the ridge wallet they're like oh wait you're actually using the ridge is it actually good and i'm like yeah it's good i'm not just gonna use this on a daily if it's not good and don't even get me started with the key case i thought i was not gonna be a fan of this but it has kept my key organization so nice. This is this is what I need when I leave the house. I never get this personal when I do these sponsored segments, but I just really want to share my experience and my love for Ridge uh, all these years, and I can't wait to continue working with them for many, many more years. They've been amazing, and I just love their product. And I know you guys will too, so that's why you gotta take advantage of their special 11-year anniversary sale. Save up to 30% off of your Ridge order when you guys go to ridge.com slash uncage this deal will last up to april 1st so don't get fooled by april fool's day get the deal now before it's too late trust me do yourself a favor get ridge you will thank me later ridge has a lifetime warranty yeah a lifetime warranty meaning if my wallet busted right now they got me covered and they have a 365 day risk-free trial period meaning you can use the ridge wallet for 364 days and if you just want to send it back because you don't like it guess what they will take it back and you will get a full refund you have nothing to lose and no ridge is not just for men so don't get it twisted ridge also launched their women's expansion so they got you guys and gals covered with all the goodness that ridge has to offer once again thank you to ridge for sponsoring today's video and always supporting the channel we love you we appreciate you thank you guys so much now back to the video as you guys can see for yourself mortal kombat 1 isn't in the greatest of states right now compared to like mk11 or mkx even mk9 uh it just something about mk1's release this time around just feels empty there's a lot of things that are happening and not happening that is pretty concerning and making the MK community a little worried and, and upset. And it's rightfully so to feel these emotions. Uh, first thing is the communication uh, hasn't been great. Now, granted, uh, I'm not going to say the communication has always been great from NetherRealm and Mortal Kombat and all of them. Uh, it, you know, there's been times where it's been kind of quiet, but for some reason this time around it's it feels like it's been a lot worse like i will give them credit in the past week or so uh for the peacemaker release they have been tweeting and posting here and there which is great but there's been times during this mk1's lifespan that i think a whole month has gone by and there was not a single thing posted from the mortal kombat official twitter so stuff like that worries us fans like we want to know something i mean they could be hard at work working on the next dlc the next story expansion whatever right that's fine let them cook but 
a simple post saying hey guys we're working hard on the next stuff the future of mk stay tuned it's gonna be exciting something like that something like uh, we're still alive would be phenomenal but it's just radio silence and we're just kind of here playing with our thumbs just thinking and 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 theory crafting on what they're working on you know it's it's not great we communication is key even if you have nothing to share just to say something you know just to have us know that they are still alive and the game is just not abandoned you know it's a little it's it's a little scary when we don't hear anything for for long periods of time um so that's the first thing communication it hasn't been great for mk1 i've said this many times and i will still say it for as long as uh you know i can say it but mk1 i think in my opinion is one of the funnest mk games gameplay wise out of all the mk games uh i i like the other ones but mk1 just feels awesome like the combos are so sick with that being said though mk1 gameplay being amazing aside just feels like it's missing a bunch of small things that could have made this game amazing day one not having crossplay is a huge uh negative i mean tekken 8 released with crossplay day one it took mortal kombat one so many months like we just got crossplay like a couple days ago so i don't know stuff like that like crossplay should be ready day one or at least like the first week or so right but we waited so several months like omni man came out tremor chameleon quan chi like so many characters have released and we still didn't get crossplay until now and it's not even the full crossplay that i kind of wanted like i wanted king of the hill lobbies with crossplay so we can have fun tournaments from both consoles fighting and the pc players but it's only 1v1 crossplay which is like it's it's cool but like it, i feel like that's just kind of like the bare minimum like i i, I would like the crossplay lobbies the crossplay king of the hill rooms but we don't have that maybe we'll get down the line i'm hoping but I'm not holding my breath. Now, my opinions on MK11, uh, there there are a lot of opinions I have on that game. I'm not gonna say MK11 was the perfect MK game because it's not. Uh, honestly, I think MK11 might be one of my lower favorites in the MK series. Uh, it had a lot of problems, but it also had a lot of great stuff. I will give it props for the things that they did right. One of them being like the game felt it had life. The game itself had life and everything surrounding the game on the outside. It was just MK life, MK energy, just soaring everywhere. The support for MK11 was just next level. It just, they, they did things for MK11 that made the MK community hype and excited to be an MK fan. For example, can we talk about the MK11 reveal event? That was one of the greatest moments of my life to experience that energy from a crowd of just mk fans it was a giant building all decked out in mk stuff packed crowd of just die hard mortal kombat fans and you just feel the excitement the roar the crowd of everything they revealed on the big screen on you know on the on the giant monitor it was just a moment that I, I i wish i could experience again something that came close to that was the combat pack reveal for mk1 at comic-con that was kind of exciting as well but just to be in a room with all the mk fans for the mk11 reveal event was just next level and i wish they did something like that for mk1 but they didn't we didn't get a reveal event mk11 also had a bunch of merchandise that you can show your mk fandom your mk love not by just playing the games but by buying the merch like buying the action figures that mcfarland toys made by buying the statues mk11 just had merch for days that's why we did the buy everything mortal kombat series because there was so much stuff to buy from mortal kombat but for mk1 the mk1 release let's let's talk about it we didn't get a reveal then we don't even have a toy line for mk1 if you look back the past three mk games had toys mk11 had toys mkx had toys mk9 had toys mk1 is the first mk to not have toys in a long time and that sucks that sucks so much they don't even have statues the only statue they have is the Liu Kang statue for the collector's edition but mk11 had a statue for their collector's edition and they had more statues outside of that mk1 does not the only thing mk really has mk1 really has is like they've done a couple collabs with some clothing brands that like they throw scorpions faces on the shirt and like that's pretty much it like other than clothes we don't really have much mk1 merch which is so sad man i know there's a lot of mk collectors out there that want to 
add to their collection, but there's just not much to buy. They're like nothing at all, really. Now I'm not blaming Netherrealm Studios or WB for what's happening for MK1's release. You know, uh, I know that they had the merger with Discovery and you know, when something huge like that happens, finances come into play, uh, profits come into play. So for Discovery, they might've been like, you know, we don't need to spend this extra amount of money making toys or, or comic books or statues. We can just focus on just racking in the money without putting out more stuff. Hence why we don't have a reveal event for MK1. Hence why we don't have toy line, statues, comics, all that good stuff. Because they're probably trying to save or make as much money as possible. Why spend, let's say, $10 to make a, a toy that costs $8 and then you make $2 back when you can just make $10 by just selling fatalities. You know what I'm saying? So that's probably a big reason why we have nothing outside of just the game for MK1. It's just a theory. I don't really know for a fact, but a lot of signs are pointing to the merger. And then speaking of the fatality, spending money on buying the fatality. Yeah. Let's talk about that. MK1, you had to spend, what, like $12, $15 for a fatality? For a fatality that you do maybe once or twice and then that's it? Like, why? Why is it so expensive to buy a fatality? A skin? Maybe I'll allow it. But a fatality? Really? Back in, like, MKX, you get free faction fatalities. We didn't have to pay for that, but now we gotta pay for fatalities? That's, that's absurd. I'm all for buying DLC, buying content for the game to support the developers and the game franchise right but when they do stuff like pay $15 for a single fatality or or stuff like that it's just it leaves a sour taste in my mouth and it just feels so scummy I believe for every recent MK game I think I bought every single piece of DLC available every skin pack every uh, uh, uh costume pack every character every whatever I've bought every single one because I love the franchise I love supporting them and it just felt right and natural and organic and it wasn't forced but this time around it, it just doesn't feel right like just the way you unlock skins in mk1 let's just talk about that really quick it's just so confusing i am still confused all right and i'm a mortal Kombat guy i can only imagine the the average joe playing mk1 they're super confused there are like different types of currency that you can use in mk1 to get stuff you can use coins for the shrine to possibly get a skin but then you can also use like, like what, what dragon crystals or something then uh, a premium currency on the premium item shop to buy skins but they don't really tell you that those skins or some skins in the premium item can be unlocked for free by just playing through some invasion or something so for some people that don't know that be like oh this is a really cool sub-zero skin i really want it i can't i can't not have it it's gonna leave the item shop i'm gonna miss it forever so i'm gonna spend real money buy the skin but then what uh, they find out later that you can just unlock it by just playing the game like it's just very confusing i feel like that's a little i don't know <laughs> misleading if you will making it seem like it's a it's a, a it's a one-time exclusive skin that you cannot get any other way i got tricked by that a couple times i bought a skin uh i think for jacks the cameo i thought it was really cool i bought it and then i found out you can unlock it through the just playing what i know i'm complaining about mk1 right now and if you I know there's a couple of you guys, maybe three, that think MK1 and the release of MK1 has been the best and flawless, perfect release of any MK game. I'm so happy for you. I'm glad that you like MK1. I love MK1's gameplay. I still like the game, but there are issues with the game. If you don't think there's issues, I'm okay with that. Everyone's entitled to their own opinion, but I think there are issues with the game. And I would consider myself a kind of above average Mortal Kombat player and I can make these complaints. You know, I can say stuff uh, about things that I love. It's, what's the word? I can give constructive feedback, criticism. Now, I'm not the only one that is not thrilled about the MK1 scene right now. Uh, we're talking about the pro players, the people that spend hours upon hours grinding the game, learning the frames, learning the, the matchup. Like, those players grind to go to these tournaments, win, and, and take home that cash money. You know what I'm saying? We know it. We love watching the high-level tournament plays. Every Netherrealm game, it's awesome. 
But this time around, the MK tournament scene isn't as appealing as previous games. Let me elaborate. Not too long ago, they announced that the MK1 Pro Competition Tour Tournament uh, will have a prizing of a quarter of a million dollars. Yeah, a quarter of a million dollars. Now you might be saying, Cage, well, I thought you said there, it's not good for the MK Pro players. A quarter of a million is a lot of money. What are you talking about, you scrub? Listen, I'm not saying a quarter of a million is not a lot of money, but I didn't say that quarter of a million is going to the first place winner. No, 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 no. The quarter of a million is split up between like 17 players. You know how much the first place uh, uh, Mortal Kombat player gets for winning after grinding for hours upon hours upon hours? You know how much they get? They get about $30,000. Not saying that's not a lot of money because that's still a good amount of money. But to put it in perspective of how little the first place person gets, let's take a look at Street Fighter's tournament prizing. For the first place prizing for the Street Fighter player that wins is one million dollars one million dollars to the first place that first place has more money than all of the pro mk1 competition combined you know what's even crazier the fourth place for the street fighter tournament makes more than the first place for mortal kombat fourth place for street fighter makes a hundred thousand dollars mortal kombat first place 30,000. I'm pretty sure Mortal Kombat's history that Mortal Kombat has sold more copies than Street Fighter. So we know that they can, uh, you know, afford a pretty big prizing for the tournaments. It's just, again, it could be Discovery saying, uh, let's, uh, let's just give them a little bit and let's take this and put it in our pockets. It's just disheartening and unmotivating for the pro players. I can imagine seeing these Street Fighter players putting in that work, putting in that grind, and winning all this money. But for MK, you're spending all these hours to possibly make like a thousand bucks. Like I think the, the lowest amount is like 17th place and it was like $500, which again, it's a lot of money, but compared to Street Fighter, that's like chump change. Like that's, that's nothing. So these players, have to travel sometimes to different states, different countries to compete, to earn points, to possibly make it to the grand finals, right? But if they spend money, I know traveling ain't cheap, spending hundreds and thousands traveling to these events to compete and then hoping they can top to make it to the finals. If they don't top, they're out of money. Like even if you top and you and you make the prize cutting, like you might break even from all the traveling that you've done. It's kind of suckish. That is the case. Like if you're not a sponsored pro player that the company is like paying for your flights and all that i see it being very tough for a an average joe a pro player to afford to keep going to these events to compete to possibly win money to break even you know what i mean but street fighter you can place like 30th place and you can still buy a house apparently like the prizing over there is crazy so i know the mk pro players are just looking at street fighter and and we're jealous i would be too uh i mean i'm not nowhere a pro player and i don't compete uh but i I can clearly see how like unmotivating it is practicing Mortal Kombat when I could practice Street Fighter and then possibly win all this money. It sucks, man. It sucks. A great way that NetherRealm, Mortal Kombat, uh, Warner Brother Discovery, whatever, could up their prizing pool is by doing what they did in the past and releasing skins that you can buy in the game with real money. And all the money that you use or all the money that the skin makes will go to the prizing of the tournaments. Like they did that for, I believe, MKX where you could buy like a, a different like uh, skins for Ermac. It was like red emerald or uh, red ruby ninja looking thing or Injustice 2 did something like that where you could buy different shaders that supported the pro scene. They should do that for MK1. And I'm sure so many people would support that. They want to support the MK community. That's a great way to do it. Release a skin in the store. All the, the, the proceeds or the profit that that skin makes goes to the pro tournament scene. It would be amazing. They could, they're releasing like these classic MK skins for the characters in MK1. They could easily just say, hey, all the money that this skin makes for, for like classic Sub-Zero will go supporting tournament scene. That Like, I think that's a big W that they would get if they did that. Will they do it? Probably not. I feel like I've been rambling on this whole video and uh, it's just because I just have a lot to talk about this game. I, I love Mortal Kombat. I love this series so much. Like, you guys know... I, I, I live and breathe Mortal Kombat, but 
this game's release just feels not the same as previous MK games. I just feel like the wind has been taken out of the sails for the MK community. It just feels like empty. You know, I know us fans gets excited when a new DLC character gets released. Like Peacemaker came out. Really cool. I'm excited. I'm playing it. But like after a week or so, it just feels empty again. This is like, oh, now what? You know, uh, it's just, I don't know what they could do. I really don't know what Netherrealm could do to make MK1 back at its prime status you know uh is it is it because mk1 has the lack of gear customization i don't know maybe it's the lack of intro outro variety maybe i don't know but they they gotta do something big to inject more life into this game again and give it like a nice rebirth like maybe for their uh um, mortal kombat 1 aftermath dlc expansion whatever they do uh maybe that could be like the second wind for this series this game because right now it's i don't i wouldn't say mk1 one is like a dead game i wouldn't say like it's on its last legs because mk1 is still fun but it just doesn't feel like it has a lot of life in it right now you know so i'm hoping that this big thing maybe nether realm hasn't been talking too much on social media because they're cooking and working really hard on this massive expansion i'm just hoping right now i don't know if it's actually gonna happen but if they release a a, a uh aftermath edition of mk1 i'm hoping i'm praying that they just revamp so much like make invasion mode uh i don't know more enjoyable give us cross play king of the hill make uh more gear something i don't know i don't know what they could do but they gotta do something because right now the current state of mortal kombat 1 it's uh, very sad very depressing i love mortal kombat so much but man oh man i would be lying if i said this game is is like my favorite game right now it's not like it's fun but i don't know man I, I'm, I'm picturing myself back when MK11 came out, when MKX, MK9, like I, I was having so much fun day and night playing MK, like it was nonstop. MK1, I'm playing it still, but I'm playing it like here and there. It's it's not the, the constant grind that I used to be on. And I think I know a lot of you guys feel the same way because I, I see in the chat, you guys are saying, yeah, MK1 just doesn't just doesn't hit the same, you know? Don't know why, be a, uh, I don't know. I can't put my finger on it. There's just a lot of things that I, I wish they did differently and hopefully things will change for the future of MK1 come their next big update, probably after Comet Pack 1 wraps up but i guess we'll see anyways those are my thoughts on the current state of mortal kombat 1 let me know yours down below what do you guys think what do you think nether realm warner brother discovery uh could do different or change or add to mortal kombat 1 to give it more life more support what do you guys think what do you guys want let me know down below in the comments i'd love to hear from you guys hope you guys enjoyed the video like subscribe to the channel if you guys are brand new ring the bell icon so you guys get notified every time we upload a brand new video my name is on cage games and you just got caged